So if you've been watching any of my videos, you've heard me stand up and talk a lot about just about everything but the actual treatment. You haven't seen the treatments yet. Um, I've talked about you know who are candidates for treatment, uh, risks, um, you know candidacy for treatment, uh, the difficulties of it. I've talked about everything, but actually showing you know sort of the benefits of treatment. So here I am at my YAG laser. This is where the magic happens. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to show you some actual treatment of a Y-string floater, my favorite type of floater to treat. Um, it might be a little uh, um, uh, confusing as to what, what you're seeing. So um, this is the laser. The way that, it's, the, way that the, the recording is set up is I have what's called a beam splitter, which does exactly that. It splits the light rays coming in and goes through these partial thickness mirrors and sends it through, you know, bouncing off a mirror, bouncing off a mirror, and then goes back to the camera where it's recorded. And it just generally sits right in between here, uh, right where I'm working. So you're actually seeing my view looking in through at least one of the oculars off to one side there. Um, it's never as good as using both eyes, and I'll explain that in just a moment at the whiteboard so you can see a little bit better. Um, but essentially the patient has their head kind of strapped in there in place, comfortably in place there. Uh, this is my light source, this is the light tower, and this I have to swing from one side or the other to illuminate the back of the eye because i got to see what I'm doing. And uh, then I have my, my eyepieces up here where I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, and uh, what you'll see is the floater, which generally has kind of a light creamy color. Uh, that's the actual color of it. If you're saying, well, wait a second, my floaters are kind of grayish or brownish or, or, or you know, darker, well, that's because you're seeing the shadow. Um, you don't actually see your floater. I get to see your floater through the microscope. I have to see your floater in order to treat it. Um, but you're seeing the shadow. So it's kind of like the question, is the moon light or dark? Well, the moon is light on the reflective side. It's dark on the dark side. So you're on the dark side. You're on the dark side of the moon. You're seeing the shadows. So uh, you'll see the entity of interest, the culprit floater. Uh, you'll see it lit up. And uh, then as I activate the laser, and, and basically you know, patients, the, the eye is fixed in position. I'm moving the laser from one place to another, from one side to the other. Uh, you'll hear in the background a lot of this noise here. This is me using uh, the, the twisting the, the, the joystick to bring the laser up and down, and then I'm activating it by pressing a little trigger on right there. And so as I hit that trigger, you will see uh, the floater move, uh, because I'm impacting it with some energy, and then you'll see a little spray of gas bubbles coming off it. It might be 10, 20, 30 or more gas bubbles you know, flying off there like microscopic tiny little gas bubbles. Uh, something like that. Uh, and, that, and what I'm doing is I'm using the laser energy to sublimate or vaporize these solid, semi-solid proteins into gas bubbles. Nobody's really measured it. We don't know if it's just water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrogen gas, um, uh, or some other combination of these components. Um, and it doesn't really matter because it doesn't accumulate. It doesn't have a gas expansion effect on the inside of the eye. It doesn't cause an elevated eye pressure. Uh, and these gas bubbles will float up to the roof of the eye and uh, where they'll dissolve. They are, because gases will dissolve into fluids. Once they're dissolved in fluids, they'll pass across cell membranes and basically get out of the eye that way. So with the most ideal types of floaters, I'm hitting it, I'm destroying it, and a couple of the examples that I'll show you in just a few moments here, uh, you'll see these things literally get smaller before your eyes. I can talk about it, I can write about it uh, on my website and, and any other sort of communication. Once you watch the video, it's pretty convincing. And for anybody, including eye care providers out there, anybody who says, this doesn't work, it can't be done, it shouldn't be done, um, it doesn't exist, I say, watch the video, watch what's happening. It's pretty darn convincing that I'm destroying these proteins. And um, you know, different types of floaters have different efficiencies. Some are more efficient, some are less efficient. I'm gonna show a couple of uh, classic Weiss ring floaters uh, to, to sort of demonstrate that. So that's just kind of the basic setup here. We'll go over to the whiteboard. I'll, I'll describe this sort of schematically, how this setup is, and then we'll show a couple of, uh, a couple of treatments live. Okay, let's switch over. So perhaps to better understand what you're seeing in the actual treatment video, I've kind of done an overall schematic of the camera setup at the laser. So we have our eye, of course. This dark thing in the middle of the eye is representative of a single isolated floater, in this case a Weiss ring floater, about in the middle part of the eye. 
uh, front to back particularly. Now, to light up the back of the eye, we use a slit lamp biomicroscope. The slit beam meaning we can narrow that beam or make it as wide or as narrow as we want and basically send that into the eye. Um, to best view where it's located, we have that slit beam uh, slanted off to one side or slanted off to the other, and it rotates on its axis, and that uh, little light bulb there is representing the light coming in. Now, as that light is coming in, it's going to reflect off some of the semi-transparent or solid objects. For instance, the optics of the eye, the cornea and the lens, are not perfectly clear, but they're fairly clear. And so as that light passes through there, you're going to get a little bit of glare, a little bit of reflection off those surfaces. And in the treatment videos, you'll usually see that off to one side, a bit of kind of a, a white kind of a or light colored glare there. Um, then it passes through the empty space of the vitreous and lights up the retina back here. And so again, in those videos, you'll see the in, in the back, the, the orangey retina kind of glowing. It's very blurry. It's in the background there. So the light is passing through these tissues here. And then you'll also get the reflection off the floater itself. So one of the questions that people have for me often is, you know, how do you know where you're located? How do you, how do you know where your laser is focused? Well, there's a couple overlapping mechanisms, uh, but one of those is looking at these reflections. Um, and I'll gauge, sort of visually gauge, it's not mechanically calibrated, but visually gauge the distance between the reflection here and the floater and the floater in the back of the eye. In this case, eh, they're about equidistant. It's about the same distance there, so I can kind of gauge where that floater is located. If the floater is back there or the floater is right there, it's going to have very different characteristics. There's going to be different distances involved. So that's our slit beam illuminating the back of the eye. And then as far as the optics, and it's a very simple, simple diagram of the optics, but I'm basically using both of the eyes looking into that space there. And I have a, a, a beam splitter, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better term, a beam splitter that takes some of the light coming in through those oculars, in this case on one side here, at a 45 degree angle, it's going to steal away some of the light. I don't know exactly how much it is. We'll say 10, 15% or something like that. Um, most of it is passing through to my eye, so I'm using both eyes. I'm getting not quite 100% in both eyes here, but some of that light is being sent off in a 45 degree mirror through a partial thickness mirror. It passes over here, hits another mirror, and then goes back, and then goes back to my camera where it's recorded. Um, since it's only recording off one eye, um, it's never going to be quite as good as the binocular stereoscopic vision that I have when I'm using both of my eyes. And I might shift my attention, my dominant eye, from one eye to the other, kind of depending on the way the light is coming in, where the floater is located. So sometimes as I'm treating, I might be using my, my right eye primarily to, to see it better, even though the camera's recording off the left. So, you know, it is very difficult to record these treatments uh, in, in any way, shape, or form that's as good as my own visualization. But anyways, this gives, gives you a brief overview of how this is set up here and uh, hopefully help you understand a little bit better when we're actually treating what, what you're actually seeing. All right, so we'll switch back over and uh, watch the treatment. So I thought I'd make a few comments uh, as we're watching the video. It should be right about there. Um, this is a 67-year-old um, radiologist from down in San Diego area and he just says he's had floaters for years and um, what he has here is a it's it's a Weiss ring but you know they don't have to be completely ring shaped to be to be called a Weiss ring it, it is really a, a thick dense uh, hyaline material that has peeled off the the back wall of the eye it pre-existed there probably his entire life um, it's just a variation of the development of the eye. So this is a particular thickening of that vitreous material, it peels off from the optic nerve, and it is suspended uh, about in the mid-portion of the eye. In his case, it's a little bit posterior of the midway point, so it's a little bit, little bit further away, but plenty far away from the retina, which is my main concern. And it's a very optically dense material, and uh, it is tethered as part of that vitreous cortex membrane. So it, it, in, in his right eye, he would tend to see it to the right of center, but it'll drift across here and then kind of move right of center again. So there's just this constant density moving across his vision. And I think, you know, with anybody driving little wacky doodles. But as a radiologist, uh, and, and I often use radiologists as an example. And I've, I've had uh, at least three patients that have been that are radiologists, and I can't think of a profession that needs better quality of vision than a radiologist. Um, I, I, I can't think because it's not just about visual acuity; it really is about the quality of vision. 
And uh, as Dr. Sabag, a retinologist up in Huntington Beach here, uh, has shown that just the presence of a posterior vitreous detachment uh, will reduce the contrast sensitivity by about 50%. Well, in order to have a Weiss ring, you have to have a posterior vitreous detachment. So if he's reduced his contrast sensitivity, and what is that? That's the ability to see gray against other various shades of gray, 50% gray against 49% gray. And that's what radiologists are doing all the time. So I'm treating primarily the Weiss ring, as you can see here. And as I'm hitting it, uh, you see sprays of gas bubbles, maybe 30, 40, 50 gas bubbles each time I fire that. And they're, they're uh, moving to the roof of the eye there. Those gas bubbles, by the way, will eventually dissolve and go away. Now, uh, as I've been talking over this, <laughs> I'm pointing down at my laptop here, but actually it's right up here, um, is that density, which was so obvious literally, what, a couple minutes ago or so, it's essentially gone or, you know, as I'm talking here, you can watch this thing just sort of disappear as we go here. Now I'll go back and clean up some other stuff. And, and right now you can see that there's some wispy little cobweb strands and some other things that I do need to clean up. But if I just got the Weiss ring variant alone, he'd be a very happy camper. Um, but as I clean up some of this other material, uh, the, the, it will improve the overall quality of vision and, and quality of life. What you saw me do just there is have him flip, flip the eye down, flip it back up again, and that sort of brings that material uh, up and closer to me. So uh, you can see that there's other uh, vertically oriented cobweb strands um, uh, in that area. Um, now, that membrane that, that peels off there, that vitreous cortex membrane, is not really a very good primary target. And so I generally don't treat that primarily, but collaterally there can be some improvement. So as I'm treating this material here, it's going to create some rents and some openings in that membrane and some of that membrane might open up and fall to the, to the wayside there where it's not quite as important. What we really want is that central visual uh, a pathway to be clear. And as I'm treating this material there, it's probably going to open up that as well. So again, to the naysayers that say this can't be done, should be done, doesn't exist, you don't want to do that, uh, or or the, the, the doctors who have a bit of a el more elitist attitude that say, well, don't you think if this worked, we would be doing it here at this fine institution? Well, you tell me. That floater that was so obviously present is not. It's not anymore. And so, um, you know, kind of interesting. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's a lot of material. Uh, you know, as a patient doing your due diligence, a lot of this stuff doesn't really matter. The technical stuff, the optical stuff, how the slit lamp works, all that kind of stuff. I know that's not really critical. What you do need to do is to find, a phys if you're going to get your floaters treated, and if you're a candidate for treatment, you need to find someone who knows what the heck they're doing. And there is just no substitute for a lot a lot, a lot of experience. And uh, as I mentioned in my other videos, this is all I do. I am the floater doctor. I treat eye floaters. This is all I've done for 13 and a half years or so as of the published date here. And um, um, I'm very good at what I do. I also am very good at knowing what not to treat, which is, I think, just as important. You need to know what to walk away from. Younger patients, sorry, uh, probably not a good candidate for treatment. So anyways, I'll wind this up. It's a lengthy one. Um, but I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a little something. And now that I have a new camera system in place that seems to be doing a much, much better job, I'm going to start posting more of these uh, interesting uh, treatment uh, videos uh, as much as possible and because I get a lot of good feedback from that. Okay. Anyways, again, uh, like and subscribe. Uh, it helps other people find me and it helps other people find someone who can uh, give them some relief from their floaters. And um, uh, if you're a candidate, inquire, uh, contact me through my website. I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Anyways, have a great day. It's been a pleasure.